द भोई डायनेस्टी आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ गजपति प्रताप रुद्रदेवा ओडिशा फेस्ड अ टर्ब्युलेंट पॉलिटिकल सिनारियो मार्क बाय ट्रेचरी कन्फ्यूजन एंड ब्लडशेड प्रताप रुद्रदेवा हैड नॉट लेफ्ट अ स्ट्रॉन्ग सक्सेसर टू मेंटेन द गजपति इंपेरियलिज्म एंड द फ्यूडेटरीज वर एंगेज इन सेल्फिश पॉलिटिकल राइवलीज द इम्पेंडिंग थ्रेट ऑफ मुस्लिम इन्वेशन एंड इकोनॉमिक बैंक सी ड्यू टू कंटिन्यूअस वोर्स ड्यूरिंग प्रताप रुद्रदेवाज रूल फर्दर वर्स इन द सिचुएशन कलुदेवा द एल्डेस्ट सन ऑफ प्रताप रुद्रदेवा असेंडेड द गजपति थ्रोन इन फिफ्टीन फोर्टी ए डी बट हिज रूल वॉज मार्ड बाय अनरेस्ट एंड लास्टेड फॉर जस्ट सेवेंटीन मंथ्स ही वॉज केल्ड बाय गोविंदा विद्याधरा अ ट्रेचरस जनरल ऑफ प्रताप रुद्रदेवा विच फर्दर एडेड टू द कन्फ्यूजन Kaludeva's younger brother Kakrudeva succeeded him but also fell victim to Govinda Vidyadhara's treachery. Govinda Vidyadhara usurped the Gaspati throne in 1541 to 1542 AD and founded the Bhoi dynasty in Odisha. The rulers of Bhoi dynasty Govinda Vidyadhara Govinda Vidyadhara ascended the throne of Odisha during a period of political upheaval in the region. He adopted the title Suvarna Kesari to exert his influence and authority over the people of Odisha. Govinda Vidyadhara led an expedition to Golconda to recover the Krishna Godavari Doab from Sultan Kuli Kutub Shah. During his reign, a revolt arose led by Raghubhanja Chota Rai, his nephew from the Bhanja dynasty of Mayurbhanj. They attacked Katak but were eventually defeated by Govinda Vidyadhara's forces. Govinda Vidyadhara later fell ill and passed away at the Saswamedha Ghata on the river bank of Vatrani in 1549 AD. The term bhoi was initially used to refer to accountants and record keepers of the kings of Odisha. Over time, some of them became generals in the Odishan army and Govinda Vidyadhara and his successor Danai Vidyadhara were prominent examples. The Bhoi dynasty founded by Govinda Vidyadhara is sometimes regarded with disdain as a dynasty of traitors by some historians. There are also opinions that the Bhois were considered to belong to an inferior caste possibly Shudra. The Chakrapratapa Chakrapratapa succeeded his father Govinda Vidyadhara around 1549 AD becoming the ruler of Odisha. He appointed Danai Vidyadhara a general as his prime minister calling him back from the south Chakrapratapa's reign was marked by tyranny cruelty and oppression making him an oppressive ruler According to Abul Fazl's Akbarnama after a tumultuous reign of 8 years Chakrapratapa was killed by his own son The Narsimha Jena Narsimha Jena became the ruler of Odisha in 1557 AD. During his reign, he was significantly influenced by Mukunda Harichandana. Mukunda Harichandana tried to convince the king to dismiss Danai Vidyadhara from power, but Narsimha Jena ignored his advice. Failing to persuade the king, Mukunda Harichandana resorted to extreme measures and murdered Narsimha Jena. After the assassination of Narsimha Jena, Raghurama Chotraya, the younger brother of the deceased king, was placed on the throne. Raghurama Chotraya. Raghurama Chotraya succeeded his elder brother Narsimha Jena to the throne of the Bhoi dynasty. He became a puppet ruler under the control of Mukunda Harichandana, the general of the Odishan army. Upon hearing the news of Raghurama's accession, Danai Vidyadhara returned from the south. Mukunda Harichandana on his way to Katak met Danai Vidyadhara at Mangaljori in Puri and gained his trust. However, Mukunda Harichandana betrayed Danai Vidyadhara and imprisoned him leading to his death. In the meantime, Raghubhanja Chotraya with the help of Bengal marched to Katak to challenge the authority of Mukunda Deva. However, Raghubhanja was captured and killed by Mukunda Deva. Subsequently, Mukunda Harichandana killed Raghurama Chotraya and declared himself the king of Odisha. 
Ramchandaradeva I. The accession of Ramchandaradeva to the Bhoi dynasty at Khurda marks a glorious epoch for the dynasty. Ramchandaradeva was originally known as Ramai Rotre, the son of Danai Vidyadhara, who was taken captive by Mukundadeva at Puri. Upon hearing the news of his father's captivity, Ramai Rotre wanted to march towards Puri, but he was confined to the fort of Rajmandri on the orders of Mukunda Harichandana. After Mukunda Harichandana's death in 1568 AD, Ramai Rotre was released from confinement and returned to Odisha. As Katak was under the control of the Afghans at that time, Ramai Rotre chose Khurda as the center of his political activity, which he received as a gift from Wala Vikram Singh. In 1568 AD, Ramai Rotre proclaimed himself as king and adopted the name Ramchandradeva one after his coronation. He proclaimed himself as the Gaspati of Odisha and introduced his own Anka year in 1568 AD. Ramchandaradeva one belonged to the Yadu Vamsa, as described in the Madala Panji. After ascending the throne, Ramchandaradeva aimed to expand his territory in all directions, facing conflicts during the Mughal Afghan struggle for control over Odisha. Mirja Raja Mansingh's presence in Odisha raised concerns for Ramchandaradeva as Telanga Mukundadeva and Chakri Brahmarbra, the sons of the diseased Mukundadeva, sought recognition from Akbar as the legitimate rulers of Odisha. Initially, Ramchandaradeva fortified the fort of Sarangagad and provided shelter to the Afghans inside it. Mansingh proceeded towards Puri and Ramchandaradeva tried to negotiate through his son Birbara, but Mansingh insisted on meeting Ramchandaradeva personally, who did not appear before him. As Mansingh captured various forts, Ramchandaradeva did not confront him and stayed inside the fort of Khurda. To resolve the situation, Akbar sought to satisfy both Ramchandaradeva and the sons of Mukundadeva. Mansingh proclaimed Ramchandaradeva as the king of Odisha and gave territories to the sons of Mukundadeva, demonstrating his diplomacy. During Ramchandaradeva's reign, Ibrahim Kutub Shah, the Sultan of Golakunda, invaded Odisha and Ramchandaradeva sought the help of Mukunda Raja of Kasimkota. The outcome of this battle is not clear, but it is believed that Ramchandaradeva was defeated, leading to the loss of Kalinga and Rajmandri to the Golakunda Sultan. Despite facing challenges from the Afghans of Bengal in the north and the Sultan of Golakunda in the south, Ramchandaradeva controlled around 32 zamindaris, including Khurda, which was particularly important with 73 forts. Ramchandaradeva's territory extended from the Mahandi River in the north to the borders of Khimindi in the south and from the Chilika Lake in the east to the Nayagad and the Spalla region in the west. Ramchandaradeva was a pious king who reinstated the idols of Jagannath, Balbhadra and Subhadra in the Puri Jagannath temple after they were burnt during the Afghan invasion led by Kala Pahada. He personally distributed Mahaprasada to different sections of Hindu society near the Jaya Vijayadwara, earning him the title Dvitiya Indradyumna. Ramchandaradeva contributed to the construction of the temple at Sakshi Gopala. To gain the approval of Brahmans and legitimize his claim to the throne, he established several shasnas, Brahman villages, one of which is known as Veera Ramchandrapura today. He was recognized by Emperor Akbar as the ruler of Odisha, but he still sought the blessings of the Brahmanas. Ramchandaradeva was a patron of scholars and himself an accomplished poet, credited with composing works like Durgotsava Chandrika and Shri Krishna Bhakta Vatsalya Charitam. The authorship of Durgotsava Chandrika is controversial, as some attribute it to Vardhamana Mahapatra, the Rajguru of the family. Raja Ramchandaradeva, one passed away in 1607 AD. Purusotamadeva Purusotamadeva succeeded his father Ramchandaradeva in 1607 AD. During his reign, 
The Mughal Emperor Jahangir appointed Hasim Khan as the Subhadar of Odisha, who planned to march towards Khurda to settle scores with Purusokamadeva. Raja Keso Das Maru, a subordinate of Hasim Khan, entered the temple of God Jagannath with his Rajput soldiers, and after besieging the temple, they set fire to the Raja's chariots, leading to Purusokamadeva's surrender and reconciliation with Keso Das Maru. Puruso Kamadeva faced further challenges during the reign of Subhadar Raja Kalyanamal, who captured the Prime Minister Vidyadhra and attacked Khurda. Purusottama eventually concluded peace with Kalyanmal. Mukarram Khan followed as the governor of Odisha, and Ramchandra, infuriated by the injury to the image of Sakshi Gopal, tried to challenge him but was defeated. He fled to seek asylum with the king of Rajmandri. For a brief period, Khurda was temporarily annexed to the Mughal Empire under Hussain Ali Khan's rule as the Subhadar, but Ahmad Beg, who succeeded Hussain Ali Khan, enabled Purusotamadeva to deal with the Mughals. Purusotamadeva gathered support from local chiefs and marched against Ahmad Beg, but unfortunately, he passed away in 1622 AD while holding a camp near Banpur. Purusotamadeva was a devoted worshipper of God Jagannath and patronized the Brahmans. He established three Brahman Shasnas, namely Purusotampura Shasna, Shri Purusotampura Shasna and Pratapa Purusotampura Shasna. Narsinghadeva Narsinghadeva ascended the throne of Khurda after the death of his father, Purusotamadeva, in 1622 AD. Yamad Beg the Subhadar of Odisha proposed that the royal family of Khurda should remain as security at the Mughal court in Katak, but Narsinghadeva refused, leading to Ahmad Beg invading Khurda. Narsinghadeva fiercely resisted the Mughal governor and defeated him, which angered Ahmad Beg and prompted him to plan a second expedition against Khurda. Prince Khurram, Shah Jaha revolted against his father Jahangir and proceeded towards Odisha, causing Ahmad Beg to flee with his family to Burdwan and then Akbar Nagar. Shah Jahan's departure allowed Ahmad Beg to return, and he remained as governor of Odisha until 1628 AD, without causing further trouble for Narsinghadeva. During the governorship of Bakwar Khan Nazim Sani, Fresh troubles arose as he led an expedition to the Sun Temple at Konarka. However, Narsinghadeva had already removed the image of the Sun God from Konarka Temple to the Puri Temple of God Jagannath. Narsinghadeva showed great respect to God Jagannath and brought back the images of Jagannatha, Balbhadra and Subhadra to the temple in Puri and reinstalled them. He also ordered to plaster the temple of God Jagannath at Puri, and after a long gap, he arranged the car festival during the spring season, which had not been celebrated due to the fear of Mughal governors. During his reign, Sri Rasikananda Deva Goswami, the famous disciple of Syamananda, visited Puri and propagated his faith throughout the kingdom of Narsinghadeva. The removal of the image of the sun god from the Konarka temple led to Matkwad Khan attacking Khurda, and in the fierce battle, Narsinghadeva met his end at the hands of his enemy. Balbhadradeva Gangadhradeva, a nephew of the diseased king Narsinghadeva, with the help of Matkwad Khan, the governor of Odisha, claimed the throne after Narsinghadeva's death. This led to resentment among the subjects and some officials of the deceased king. Balbhadradeva, the elder brother of Narsinghadeva, with their assistance, killed Gangadhra and ascended the throne in 1648 AD. During Balbhadradeva's reign, he faced conflicts with the Mughals. When Turbiyat Khan served as the deputy to rule Odisha on behalf of the Mughals, Mirza Balki attacked the fort of Andhari. Rai Pitam, who was appointed by Balbhadradeva to manage the fort, was defeated and fled, while his family members were captured by the Mughals. Balbhadradeva fought with the Muslims and freed Rai Pitam's family from their clutches. However, 
the Mughals managed to occupy the Andhari fort. His reign period was regarded as inglorious. Balbhadradeva is known to have established the Veera Balbhadrapura Shasna near Puri during his rule. Mukundadeva won. Mukundadeva won succeeded his father Balbhadradeva and ascended to the throne of Khurda in 1659 AD. Since he was a minor, Dharmadeva Rajguru administered the kingdom on his behalf. During the turmoil caused by the fratricidal war among the sons of Shah Jaha, Dharmadeva Rajguru organized the zamindars of Khurda and refused to pay tribute to the Mughals. After Aurangzeb's victory, Khanai Doran was sent to deal with the Odishan zamindars and the king of Khurda. Khanai Doran defeated Mukundadeva in 1661 and offered the kingdom to Bhramrabra, Mukundadeva's younger brother. Mukundadeva negotiated with Khanai Doran to regain his kingdom and with the assistance of Dharmadeva Rajguru, he successfully regained his throne. After his coronation, he imprisoned Bhramrabraraya. During the Subhadarship of Sayasta Khan, the maternal uncle of Aurangzeb, Mukundadeva faced problems from the Mughals. Abu Nasir, one of Sayasta Khan's sons, led an attack on Jajpur and Jankara, destroying temples and establishing mosques. He planned to attack the Jagannath temple in Puri but halted at Sakshi Gopal due to a sudden thunderbolt during spring, which led to negotiations with Mukundadeva and Abu Nasir eventually returned to Katak. Mukundadeva's reign came to an end in 1688 when he passed away due to smallpox. Divya Singhadeva won. Divya Singhadeva once succeeded his father and proved to be one of the ablest rulers of the Bhoi dynasty. During his reign, Ekram Khan attacked the Jagannath temple in Puri, capturing fake images of the lords. However, after Ekram Khan's departure, Divya Singhadeva reinstalled the original images in the temple and allowed all temple rites, including the Kar festival, to continue bringing joy and jubilation to the people of Odisha. When Murshid Kuli Khan, the governor of Bengal, was also appointed as the governor of Odisha, he sent his son-in-law, Shujauddin, as the deputy of Odisha. Shujauddin marched towards Khurda, but he was defeated by Devyasinghadeva, who had the support of local zamindars, further enhancing his reputation as a capable ruler. Divya Sai Gadeva I passed away in 1714 AD. Hare Krishna Deva Hare Krishna Deva succeeded his brother Divya Singh Deva. His reign was marked by a period of peace and tranquility as there were no Muslim attacks on Khurda or the Puri Jagannath temple during his rule. The white washing of the Jagannath temple was completed under his reign, improving its appearance. Hare Krishna Deva established a new Shasna called Veera Hare Krishna Pura Shasna during his rule. During Hare Krishna Deva's reign, the renowned scholar Gadadhar Rajguru created many celebrated literary works such as Sudhi Sara, Kala Sara, and Achara Sara. Hare Krishna Deva passed away in 1719 AD. Gopinath Deva Gopinath Deva's accession marked a halt to the conflicts with the Mughals which were common during the Bhoi dynasty's rule. His reign is notable for a romantic episode involving Sukadei, the queen of Tralukya Harichandana of Baki. Gopinath Deva was attracted to Sukadei's beauty and attacked Baki to materialize his dream. He occupied some Parganas during the attack. In the battle, Tralukya Harichandana was killed by Gopinath Deva but Sukadei retaliated and defeated Gopinath Deva, taking him as a prisoner. The gracious queen released Gopinath Deva and, in return, he returned all the previously occupied territories to her. Gopinath Deva was known for his charitable nature and established a village named Rotrapura near Puri. He granted a village to his physician, Dhananjaya Nidhinath Rao, who cured him of a fatal disease. During his reign, a special ritual cleansing took place in the Jagannath temple, involving the bathing of the gods three times. 
Despite his charitable acts, Gopinath Deva had several black spots in his character. One instance was his attempt to forcibly take the daughter of the chief of Ranpur, who was known for her beauty. The chief's flight to Rathipur with his daughter and followers led to a conflict where the chief's soldiers killed Gopinath Deva, bringing an end to his uneventful reign. Ramchandra Deva II Ramchandra Deva II's reign marked a turbulent phase in the Bhoi dynasty's history. Shortly after ascending the throne, he faced an invasion from the Nizam of Hyderabad. The Nizam's forces captured Ramchandra Deva II's territory, including areas extending between Tekkali, Raghunathpur, and the Chilka Lake. Despite the setback, Ramchandra Deva II remained resolute and gathered support from the native pikes and zamindars to confront the invading army. However, his forces were defeated by the Nizam's army and the mentioned territory was lost to the Nizam. Taki Khan, the Nayab of Odisha appointed by Murshid Kuli Khan, did not come to the aid of Raja Ramchandra Deva to during the invasion. Taki Khan, known for his religious bigotry, led destructive actions against Hindu shrines in Odisha and proceeded towards Khurda. Although Ramchandra Deva to gathered the support of the pikes, the influence of the Brahmans persuaded them not to fight for the king, and key officials like Bakshi Benu Brahmravara Rai and Devan Nilambar Harichandana fled from the battlefield. In response to the challenges, Ramchandra Deva to appointed to Muslims, Lodhu Miyana Devan and Khalifa Gadadhar Mangaraja as Bakshi, but the result was not favourable. Taki Khan demanded the surrender of Ramchandra Deva to after executing the newly appointed Divan and Bakshi. Subsequently, Taki Khan captured Ramchandra Deva and took him to Katak. During this time, rebellious sons of Ramchandra Deva to fled from the palace. Taki Khan pursued them and occupied territory between Khurda and Banpur. One of Ramchandra Deva II's sons, Bagirathi Kumar, sought help from the king of Kodala and combined forces from Athgar, resulting in a disastrous outcome for the Mughals. However, Taki Khan continued to keep Ramchandra Deva to under house arrest in the palace of Khurda without trusting him fully. Ramchandra Deva too was well aware of Taki Khan's religious bigotry and took steps to safeguard the idols of Jagannath, Balbhadra and Subhadra from the Puri temple. He removed the idols first to Banpur and then to Takkali to protect them from Taki Khan's invasion. Taki Khan's attempt to attack Puri and enter the Jagannath temple failed as the idols were not present there. However, Taki Khan persisted and launched another attack on Khurda, but Ramchandra Deva to fled. During Taki Khan's absence on a trip to Murshidabad, Ramchandra Deva to reinstalled the idols of the lords in the temple. Taki Khan returned and made Ramchandra Deva to a prisoner in the Bharapti fort, where he was later assassinated by two Khandayats employed by Rajguru Parmalakshmi. After Taki Khan's death, Mushid Kuli Khan too was appointed as the Nayab Nazim of Odisha and Ramchandra Deva too was released from the fort of Barabati. Ramchandra Deva too was greeted by the feudatory chiefs upon his release. It is suggested that Ramchandra Deva too fell in love with Soria, the daughter of Mushid Kuli Khan too, and married her after converting to Islam. However, some historians question the circumstances of his conversion, believing it was a result of his weak rule and not a genuine act of faith. After his conversion, Ramchandra Deva too was barred from entering the Jagannath temple, leading to an open rebellion against him by Brahmans and temple priests. In the midst of these challenges, Mir Habib, the deputy of Murshid Kuli, took over the administration of Odisha. Out of frustration, Ramchandra Deva to took poison and died in 1736 A.D. of Deva After the death of Ramchandra Deva II, there was a period of uncertainty in the Bhoi dynasty. In an attempt to fill the political vacuum, Padmanav Deva, the king of Patiya, 
was appointed as the ruler of Khurda by Mir Habib. However, he was not the choice of Ramchandar Deva to dot the rule of Padmanav Deva faced opposition from the people of Khurda and he struggled to effectively fulfill his duties as a king. Ultimately, in 1739 AD, Padmanav Deva left the throne of Khurda, further adding to the instability in the region. Birki Shor Deva Birki Shor Deva was chosen as the rightful successor to the throne of Khurda by Raja Ramchandra Deva II in 1739 AD amid popular discontentment against Padmanva Deva. He established friendly relations with Murshid Kuli Khan II, saving his family from an attack by Alivardi Khan, which strained his relationship with Alivardi Khan initially. Odisha became a battleground for political conflicts between the Mughals and the Marathas and although Birki Shordeva did not side with the Marathas, he eventually had to succumb to them. The Marathas captured Puri and took control of several territories under Birki Shordeva, making zamindars of these areas independent from Khurda's rule. Birki Shordeva faced a rude shock when the Marathas bribed priests at the Jagannath temple gaining administrative control over the temple. Towards the end of his reign, Birki Shordeva's mental state deteriorated and he was accused of dishonesty by the Patnaik family of Bangoraba. His madness led him to kill his four sons and he was captured by Bakshi Damodra Brahmarvara and later imprisoned by Raja Ram Pandit, the Maratha governor of Odisha. Birki Shordeva passed away in 1793 AD and his grandson Divya Singh Deva to succeeded him as the ruler. His reign was a significant period in the cultural history of Odisha, witnessing the introduction and popularity of Radha Krishna worship in his kingdom. His mother, Lalita Devi, made notable contributions by establishing Lalitpura Shasna and building several mandapas inside the Jagannath temple. Birki Shordeva also renovated the Markanda tank by removing mud from it and his 52-year-long rule brought peace and tranquility, despite temporary disturbances due to conflicts between the Mughals and Marathas. Divya Singha Deva II Divya Singha Deva II's reign, although short, had notable achievements. He maintained a strained relationship with the Marathas right from the beginning of his rule. Despite pressure from the Marathas and the East India Company, he provided shelter to Balram Mahartha, a rebellious landholder of the British Company in Ganjam. When Balram Mahartha was captured by the British sepoys under Snodgrass, the Pikes, local militia, attacked and freed Balram. Raja Ram Pandit, the Maratha governor, marched to confront Divya Singha Deva too, but believing that Balram had died, the king avoided the Maratha's wrath. A famine occurred during his reign, causing significant loss of life, but Divya Singh Deva to still performed religious activities like whitewashing the Jagannath temple and organizing the Julna Yatra, swing festival, for the gods. The Aruna pillar, brought from the Sun Temple at Konarka, was installed before the Jagannath temple during his rule. Divya Singh Deva II passed away in 1798 AD. Mukunda Deva II After the death of Divya Singh Deva II, a conflict arose between Shamsundare Deva and Mukunda Deva II over the throne. Mukunda Deva II became the king of Khurda in 1798 AD. With the support of Sadashiv Rao, the Maratha governor and the British authority, Mukunda Deva II initiated negotiations with the East India Company to oust the Marathas from Odisha and promised them strategic territories previously held by the Marathas. In 1803, the British attacked Odisha, capturing Puri and moving towards Katak, occupying the Barabati fort. Mukunda Deva II initially remained a silent spectator but later became rebellious when the British authority did not fulfill their promises. He raised troops with the help of local chiefs, and the British authority perceived him as a threat. Under Major Fletcher, the British captured Mukundadeva to and Jai Rajguru, 
who was believed to be the mastermind behind the rebellion. Mukundadeva too was imprisoned in Katak, where he sent a petition seeking pardon from the British government. The British government released him from Midnapur but did not return the kingdom of Khurda to him. Mukuddeva too passed away in 1817 and his successors were allowed to stay in Puri being known as the kings of Puri. Administration of Bhois The Bhois maintained an efficient administrative system with the king at the apex. Succession to the throne followed the law of primogeniture but exceptions were made in certain cases like Narsinghadeva, Divyasinghadeva and Ramchandaradeva too. The position of Rajguru held high esteem and was usually chosen from influential Brahman families of Batsasa Gotra, though exceptions allowed Brahmans from Kaushika Gotra to be selected as well. Rajgurus played a crucial role as constant advisors to the king and had deep knowledge of the Sastras. Other officials like Ola Behera, Khandayat, Bisoi, Bebarta, Vaki, Dalai, Karanas and Naik assisted the king in the smooth discharge of administration. The Military The army administration under the Bhoris was efficient and well organized. The Bakshi was an officer responsible for managing military affairs and enjoyed rent-free jagis while remaining loyal to the king. The soldiers in the army were known as Paikas and were drawn from the community of cultivators with additional participation from Khons, Telugus and even Muslims. The military organization included cavalry, elephants and chariots. Forts played a crucial role in the army administration, serving as defensive strongholds. Victorious soldiers were rewarded while traitors faced punishment as part of the military administration of the Bhois. The Revenue System The revenue administration under the Bhois was well organized, with rent fixed on land and collected in kind. The king also received Nazrana, presentation, from subordinate rulers and subjects during various ceremonies related to the royal family. The duty on exported salt contributed to the king's income. The income was primarily utilized for religious purposes, such as maintaining the Jagannath temple and its surroundings, as well as for the welfare of the state. The kingdom was divided into several jagis, indicating the prevalence of feudalism during this period. Each jagir was administered by a dalbehera, denoting the modern district. The village served as the lowest unit of the administrative setup, with a Pradhan serving as the head of the village, responsible for local administration. Development of Orhia Literature The Bhoi period in Orhia literature saw significant progress and witnessed a decline in the importance of Sanskrit literature compared to the Gaspati age. Ramchandra Deva authored Shri Krishna Vakta Vatsalya Charitam. Poet Chinthamani Mishra contributed many Sanskrit works, including Sambarari Charita, Vagmaya Viveka, and Kadambarisra. Biswanatha Samantaraya's works such as Ritritser, Haladhra Mishra's Sangeeta Kalpalta and Basantotsava, Raghunath Ratha's Natyam Norma, and Mukundadeva's Narayana Shatakam and Hidyalu Rasba were notable Sanskrit works during the Bhoi period. The Bhanja kings of Ghumsar played a significant role in enriching Orhia literature during their reign. Ghananjaya Bhanja, a prominent poet, authored several works, including Raghunatha Vilas, Madana Manjari, Ichhapti, and Tripura Manjari. Ghana Bhanja is credited with composing mythological kavyas like Tralokya Mohini, Rasnidhi, and Govinda Vilsa. Upendra Bhanja, the poet laureate of the time, surpassed all with his immortal romantic creations, including Vadehisa Vilsa, Subhadra Parinaya, Lavanyavti, Koti Brahmanda Sundari, and Prema Sudhanidhi. Poet Dina Krishna Das contributed notable works like Raskalola, Rasa Vinoda, Gundicha Vijaya, and Namratna Gita. Abhimanyu Samanta Sinhara composed Vidadha Chinthamani, Prema Chinthamani, Rasbati, and Prem Kanta. 
other renowned poets of the time and their works include Brajnatha Bajjena, Ambika Vilsa and Chatura Vinoda. Bhakta Charnadas, Mathura Mandla. Biswanatha Khuntiya, Vichitra Ramayana. Mahadev Dasa, Vishnu Purana, Markanda Purana, Padma Purana, Kartika Mahatmya, Magha Mahatmya and Baskha Mahatmya. Narsimha Mishra, Sivanarayana Bhanja Mahodya Natika, Kaviratna. Purusottama Mishra, Sangeeta Narayana. Raghunath Ratha, Natya Manorama. Chandrasekhara Pattanayak, Leelavati Vistara. Jadumni Rautraya, Kavi Kalpadruma. The era witnessed the creation of numerous immortal literary works, showcasing literary style and intricate wordplay. The feudal thought was a prominent theme in many of these literary creations. So, this is the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. To get the note of this video scan the above QR code or check description to get the link. Thanks for watching have a beautiful day.